From the campus studios of Saarland University, this is Robcast, the light-hearted podcast for learners of English, with Roger Tarleton and Peter Tischer. Hello, welcome to Robcast. This is Peter Tischer, and I'm back with Christoph Klein. Hello, Christoph. Hello, Robcasters. Our faithful listeners will remember Christoph, the guy who spent a year in Great Britain at college, which is, of course, a school for those who are more into the American idiom. And he was an assistant teacher there. And uh, I still have a few open questions about. Yes, you told me you wanted to know about the rich folks. About the rich folks, right. Uh, speaking of rich, first of all, how rich do you have to be to send your kid there? What's uh, tuition? You have to be well off. Um, uh-huh. I think for the boarding accommodation, you had to pay at least eight thousand pounds, which is nine thousand euro. Uh huh. Okay. And that was at year, least that was year seven. So uh, the older the pupils get, um, the more they had to pay for the boarding accommodation. And that's per term. That's per term. Yeah. So three terms per year. Three terms per year. So I'd need thirty thousand euros a year. Yeah. Oh, my God, that's sort of my pay, roughly. (laughs) I have to find something else for my kids. What do you get for that? Gold-plated toilet seats? Not quite, but close. The student room would usually have um, heated towel racks, um, flat screen TV, sometimes two of them, Mm -hmm. um, because usually rooms were shared by two students, so they had two TVs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, of course, uh, plenty of space. Uh, Some of the rooms had uh, kitchen equipment. Uh, a microwave oven, uh, convection combination or something. So really, you could live well there. Oh, my God. Were you at all prepared for that? Did you have an idea before you came there? I read what they said on the on the web page about the, the equipment they had, but you expect that uh, things are a bit polished on the website and do not really believe what you read there. At, at least that was my impression. And when I came there, it was in the middle of the night, um, mm-hmm. One of the house teachers fetched me from York Station and I saw nothing of the campus basically until I got shown into my room, which had the sad facilities and I was pretty impressed about that. And the next morning when I saw the the campus in daylight, um, I continued in awe to stare at a fleet of little golf buggies. Golf buggies? Golf buggies. They use it. Do they have a golf course? Uh, No, they don't. That's still missing, but uh, I'm I'm sure they will um, deal with that in the next years. (laughs) <laughs> um, but they use the buggies in order to get around campus. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's that large? Yeah. Um, can you give us an idea how? Um, I don't have numbers, but with a golf buggy, you would need at least 10 minutes to get ar- around it. Oh, my God. Okay. Okay. And what is on? I mean, it isn't full of buildings, I imagine. Um, so not entirely. W- what will you find there? If you They've got a patch of forest um, where they camp out. Mm -hmm. Um, They've got huge sports grounds, um, pitches for football and for rugby. They just recently installed an athletics field there. They have a swimming pool indoors Mm -hmm. Uh and uh, several sports halls as well. Oh, my God. And, of course, a, a whole equestrian center. An equestrian center. Yes. Uh, that maybe That's a difficult word. That means they keep horses there, folks. Uh, yeah, pupils are allowed to bring their horse. Uh, uh, oh, okay. So you don't get a horse there. You bring your you bring own horse. You bring your own, horse. Yeah, yeah. And food for the horses is provided, included. Is that in the tuition? Yeah. <laughs> ah, good. At least that. So you, you get two meals, one for yourself and one for your horse. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> My God. Uh, and uh, so you get... Teaching for all that, I imagine, also. So you have a... Um, yeah, they offer all that as uh, afternoon activities. Um, mm-hmm. They have... The, the pupils who bring their horse have a special status. They have the opportunity to take classes on the riding fields mm-hmm. during their normal school times. So they do have that in their, in their schedule. Now, this being such a large setup... Um, how do they keep track of their students? I mean, uh, I'm pretty sure students could sort of hide out and do things that they're they not do. supposed they do, to. Yeah. Um, there's um, two methods they're using. Uh-huh. Um, one is CCTV. So that is closed circuit television. That's so it. that's basically cameras. That cameras keep- everywhere. When we did our first round on the campus, the head of boys boarding showed us around school uh-huh. a few days after we arrived. 
And he told us, we know that Britain has 50% of the world's CCTV cameras. Mm -hmm. And then he said, yes, and 50% of those are on our school campus. <laughs> Which is a joke, of course, but is it really that? Yeah, they keep close uh, watch on everything the pupils are doing. Uh, and of course, they want to prevent anyone from outside coming on the on the campus. Mm -hmm. And um, and what was what's the second method to keep track of students? Um, whenever there's free time, um, when pupils are not supposed to be in school, in activities, or in mm -hmm. the boarding house, there's outside patrols by house parents and uh, other staff. But they're not armed. No, they're not armed, and they don't have <laughs> night vision, unfortunately. <laughs> Well, let's get to that, I'm sure. Uh, my God, this is fascinating. Look, our time's up for today, but you're going to have to tell me exactly what your room looks like next time, okay? Because I'm, I'm seriously reconsidering my career right now. Okay. okay, I'll tell you. Okay, talk to you next time. Bye, everyone. Bye. You've been listening to Ropecast, brought to you by Saarland University, featuring Roger Charlton and Peter Tischer. Tune in for the next edifying episode on your podcast dial. <laughs>